All right, so in this video, we're going to do a couple of cleanup type things. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do is move this connection string out to a config file. Oh, I just moved some code. Let me do that. Um, there's a config file uh, system that comes in .NET. It's pretty deep and detailed. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of separation of concerns. So what we have here is a bunch of code that talks databasey stuff, but all it's doing is, is getting the data. And then we got some code over here that's doing some stuff with that stuff. And it is what we want to do with the data. So um, we're going to do something which you guys have heard of already. We're going to make a repository to hide all of this silly code uh, so that our program can focus on this stuff and not have to worry about that stuff. So first, let's talk a little bit about the configuration system. Uh, .NET configuration system. Sure. There's lots of interesting things inside here. Let's see. That's probably MSDN, really hard to read. Um, you can tell I've been doing these searches a little bit. So, walkthrough maybe? Configuration system tutorial. Hey, check that out. That is one that has come up before, and I think that one's a decent one. So, there is a lot of stuff. Now, keep it, this is 2013, so that's pretty good. That's pretty recent pretty new good they've got the using system configuration and they mentioned configuration manager um, and assume you have included this this line here is very important so this is a change that happened from dotnet 1.0 to dotnet 2 point something um, and it's really annoying because the default template doesn't do that for you for a console app um, so the basic idea is that there is a machine level configuration and then your app configuration adds to that. Uh, your app configuration can be, your program can choose to load different configuration files, but by default, it loads a particular configuration file. Um, and there is a app settings place where you can store key value pairs. There's a connection strings place where you can store connection strings and tell it which particular uh, database connection code is, should be using that connection string. And this is how you get the connection strings out. And then there's all kinds of other stuff where you can write your own things and blah, blah, blah. This is going away somewhat in the next version of .NET. The .NET Core stuff is switching this out for JSON files, but I've heard that after that, they're going to go to something else called a Project X file or something, or I don't know what's going on. So this is still the way to do it as of right now, which is 10 to 2016. So back to our code. Here we are. And I'm going to expand the references section, and there is no system.configuration here. Well, usually people don't check that first. Uh, usually it goes something like this. I want to get a connection string. So bar connection string equals configuration manager dot. Huh. I don't have that. Well, maybe I'm just missing the namespace. System.configuration dot there's other stuff right but there's no configuration manager what the heck so it turns out that a bunch of this stuff that's that you're seeing in this dot without that let me move that this bit is coming from a uh, different dll which i believe is ms core lib uh, the base library. That's where they started off with all their configuration stuff and then they realized they needed to move that out to a different DLL. Uh, luckily you can have two different DLLs that both generate the same namespace. That is not a problem. You just don't want them to both generate the same class name. Uh, you can actually do that too. There's a thing called app domains where you can segment what's loaded but and that's getting kind of deep. So let's add in our reference 
to system.configuration. Woo, there it is. Version 4 matches our framework 452. Okay. And now, what do we get? Dot configuration manager. Yep. Dot connection strings. I would give it a name of some sort. And it comes back with a connection string. And that's what that looks like. So where does the connection string actually go? Where, where does this config file live? Oh, it turns out uh, most templates in Visual Studio will add a configuration file for you. Here is what it looks like. It doesn't have a whole lot of stuff inside it. Just saying that, yeah, I need the .NET 4.0 framework, specifically 4.5.2, in order to run this program. Now, that's in your source code. When you build the program, it goes to a different location. It gets copied to your debug directory. Now, so here is your executable file, and here is your config file renamed to match the executable name. So here is the exact same information in that file. Now, there's ways to change it. Oh, and why does it go to this directory? Though well, that has to do with this guy here. But that's not everything there's another layer which might get messed up so let me show that to you since this is all about little details along the path um, in properties there's all kinds of things you can change one of the things you can change is where things build to and where things build to you can say for the debug configuration which is currently active okay I want to build to this directory here uh, that's pretty much how it sets up by default um, if you create a new configuration it doesn't automatically change that maybe it's I only get to create a configuration about once every six months so um, and usually it's I'm just setting up the release configuration or something like that. The other things about the debug configuration, uh, there's a debug constant so if you've ever dealt with C code it's like this uh, so if debug that's defined, boo hiss is not defined. All of this code's now commented out effectively. Uh, there are, wow, I am really digressing. Um, yeah, build a 32-bit if you can. How many warnings do you want to show when we're compiling and blah, blah, blah. All kinds of good stuff inside here. Oh, uh, stay away from this guy and this guy for right now unless you know what you're doing because it's a one-way trip it's hard to come back um, well yeah well, you got git so you can come back no problem anywho where the heck was I right so I am going to add to the app config file and I'm going to put in a connection string so Connection strings, thank you, IntelliSense. A connection string. Now I need to add the name equals, and I'm going to call this Star Wars. I had some indecision at this point, and I finally chose a name Jedi Mind Trick. And connection, is that what it is? Oops. Now, this one gets our connection string from here, but there's one small little detail, which is that this has got double black slashes because we were doing a C-sharp string, and now we're going over to XML land, and so here we do not need the double backslash. Okay, I'm going to take that name and use that right here okay and then instead of using this hard-coded thing we'll use this connection string thing so save and build well build I'm using a keyboard that does not have a row of function keys so my normal default of F6 to build everything doesn't work. Oh, hello. 
uh, reload. Yes. All right. So here's something interesting. We had the console to sql.exe to config file open. And because we're building it, the file that was on disk changed. And so it's saying, hey, do you want me to load the new changes in? Is, yeah. So now our file on disk has a little section. There's a whole other set of things called config transforms that you can do so that your debug version and your release version of the file are different. And this minute, this recording is already 10 minutes long. Oh my God. So let's just debug through the sky. Verify that it works. And oh, I can't hit F10. I have to use this one. Step over. Connection string. Got my connection string, and everything else should work the same. It should. There it is. Oh, and I really should let myself know that it is waiting for me to press something. I'll add that in really quick. All right. The video is getting a little bit long, so I gotta switch over to another video. Otherwise, I can't upload these things. Uh, and let me save my changes. Where, 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 where did it go? Here it is. Quit all. Now we are still on this guy. Here's what I'm going to do: is uh, I'm going to keep this branch, and I'll go back and I'll tag things to show specific spots along the way and I'll update the documentation to match and send the changes push okie doke next video